it's a low one because my allergies are kicking. So when you do this <laughs> remix, like there's a, a nice bass tone you can fiddle got with. It, got it. Noodle with. Uh, welcome to Binary Jazz. Uh, Thanks. It, this is a podcast. Uh, and uh, you have found it. Uh, we're here most weeks and uh, we are in season five and we still haven't figured out how to start these things uh, since the the um, a decision to to shift uh, our to be more just open ended and and free spirited and random whatever is is on our minds to talk about. Uh, who are we? <laughs> who are we? <laughs> I don't know. Who are we? Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm Chris. Jesse, what's on the internet? I am joined as always by Gary, who's binary Gary on the internet, and Allison, who is Allison Plus on the internet. We are on the Twitters uh, until it explodes, uh, and also I mean barely the Mastodons, uh, probably an equal amount, um, and uh, and yeah, that's that's the deal. Uh, you can find us online at binaryjazz.com and wherever um, good podcasts are downloaded. This is like a weird week. We uh, we decided here, not we, the weather decided that uh, it was spring. And so like pollen, like more than I've ever experienced before in my life, which is why I have hmm. this dulcet tone today. Um, but everybody is just like coughing and just like nose running and like headaches and all that. And now it's rainy and 40 again today. So it's like washing all that pollen away, uh, which is great. <clears throat> I could use a reprieve. Um, also, apparently allergy medicine makes me do silly things like not super silly, but I make mistakes that I don't usually make. So uh, I was on um, another live stream this week. Uh, I was. Uh... Uh, we had some unfortunate news where uh, I said I was going to talk about it, but I'm talking about it anyway. <laughs> um, uh, where uh, uh, nine percent of the company uh, was laid off, uh, and nine, lost. nine, yes, nine, less than nine, but nine was the number that we were given. Um, and uh, among those who who are no longer at the company are basically the entirety of the Devrel team. Um, well, the entirety of the Devrel team. And uh, there was at least one, well, there's one person who has, had been working on uh, content for a live stream uh, discussion about local development uh, that was going to happen on Wednesday. And she is no longer at the company. And so I, there's the marketing dude who's like taking over and I'm like, do you need help or backup or anything? And he's like, sure. What do you know about this? I'm like, okay, I can talk about that. Uh, so, so yeah, the day before uh, the thing, I was I was not roped in because I volunteered, but uh, uh, talking so, about uh, <clears throat> local development, specifically uh, using Lando. I was just going to ask, like, are you all still big on Lando? I know that you used to, it was it was called something else before Lando in the early days when Pantheon was really pushing it. There was a there was a local dev product that Pantheon, yeah. uh, which was a GUI that wrapped around Lando. Docker. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah, I used that, and um, for the time, it was very impressive. Is Lando an acronym or is it just a name? Lando's a man, it's, not a system. It's a, yeah, it's it's a. Is that the line? Did I get the line right? Damn it! I I I botched it. That was a great <laughs> opportunity, and I just tripped and fell on my face. Because that's all I can think of. <laughs> Lando's not a system. He's a man. No, is that? Jeez, I gotta look this up. <laughs> uh, it's not. A, it's not an acronym for anything. Uh, not, Lando's not a system. He's a man. That's it that that i'm aware of um it's just it's just a wrapper of <clears throat> docker um yeah it's it's yaml files that make like build um docker compose files um it's 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 very slick like for for if you're forced to use docker like i feel like it's a good solution to avoid yeah, it means you like, don't have to it means you don't have to, have to figure stuff. out yeah it means you don't have to figure out all the composers or the docker stuff yeah, um, it's good. It's great. And and in particular, we like it at Pantheon because there's a Pantheon specific recipe that builds the box that is designed to to be similar. similar yeah. To, yeah, yeah. So you can find that online, and there'll be a link in the in the show notes. Lando Dev. I used to be in their Slack and pretty active when I was first using it. I I am in their Slack, but I am not active. <clears throat> you know, and how I will many, say this: like, how many Slacks are you all a part of? Now, 
now currently actively yeah like if you're if you're looking at your 12, app or whatever 10, 3, 4, how many are you signed 5, into 6 7 12 9 10 11 12 13 okay. of, <clears throat> a lot there's only like four of those i pay attention well yeah there's only like four of those that i pay attention <laughs> to really uh -huh. um and there's others that like have the little dots and i just ignore them all the time mm -hmm. i treat um, a lot of them like read only yeah yeah don't participate i'm a lurker um and then there's a lot more that I'm not that I could be logged into, but I'm not like a lot yeah. more. Yeah. Um, yep. So that that's a somewhat trimmed down list, and I probably could trim it down even further. Um, yeah, let's do some spring cleaning here. Uh, sign out of ten percent or nine percent, I guess is probably the <laughs> <laughs> digital hygiene. Yeah, nine percent of twelve is probably one point something. So I need to log out of at least one of these. Yep, you do. Uh, I could probably log out of the uh, the Reynolds Slack that is not being used. <laughs> if I signed out of my family Slack, everyone would get really mad at me. <laughs> well, like it was really just a Slack between me and Aaron, uh, and we had the idea to invite the kids, but they never caught on. And now we're all on Discord, or at least me and the kids are on Discord, and Aaron and I have our own private messaging app. So like the yeah. Slack isn't doing anything. In fact, well, decision made then. <laughs> yeah, in fact, I will do it. I'll do it right now. Sign out of Reynolds. There, there's my 9%. Whew. <clears throat> I haven't decided which one I'm signing out of yet. I've looked at them and I'm not sure. <laughs> so you prompted this and then now you're yeah. chickening out, is what I'm yeah, hearing. That's what I'm hearing too. <laughs> yeah, I kind of am. <laughs> Woo. I mean, you Sign can always let us decide, being like, fourth from the top, it's got to go. Yeah. Like, well, oh, that turns out really well because it was Woo. <laughs> no longer in the WooCommerce slide. I'm not even, even doing anything with WooCommerce these days, so that's a good idea. Yes. There you go. That's, that's a good thing. Two jobs ago when uh, we were, like, really pushing the seams of WooCommerce, that was useful. I recently saw a job listing, and initially I was kind of interested in it. It was like, for freelancers it's part-time i'm reading i'm like oh i've got these skills i've got this stuff great 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 hitting all the check marks um flexible schedule great and then i get to <laughs> payment and it was 12 to 20 dollars an hour and i was like are you kidding me and for all the stuff they wanted i was like it, it clearly had to be someone who knew like knew what what the hell was going on but that's canadian dollars no it was u.s okay and it's but it was in much, that's like 50 canadian dollars it's still not enough yeah no for sure oh so sad i the wordpress ecosystem i just get so mad yes there was a there was an interesting uh thread in the post status uh, slack post status is a wordpress community uh about um a professional wordpress community um about uh page builders versus gutenberg mm -hmm. um and one of my former colleagues uh from human made uh frank uh was talking to i think the other person probably was also german so it was a very so one thing to know about germans <laughs> One thing to know about Europeans in general is they're very, very direct and very frequently uh, unapologetic. That's less true about about uh, people from the UK. There's this whole like uh, idea of of uh, presentation and and properness uh, in the UK that's not necessarily uh, mirrored in other parts of Europe, uh, particularly the Dutch. But also, I find the German to be very straightforward and very direct, um, and uh, which can occasionally be off putting to people who are not familiar with that uh, mode of, of communication um and so there was a uh okay, sorry research uh in quotations study uh where they surveyed uh somebody some website i had never heard of uh surveyed 667 uh wordpress professionals uh and then derived statistics about the ecosystem based on that uh that data set uh, you know that they did 666 and then we're like we can't do this we have to add one more right <laughs> like <laughs> i i don't know i 
I, there's a lot of things I was thinking about, like that number specifically. <laughs> um, uh, but anyway, one of the things about it, one of the things in it was like what page builders are most commonly used. And the top one was Elementor. Oh, yeah. And the second top one was Gutenberg. And Elementor was like 27%, but it was declining. And uh, Gutenberg was like 23%, and it was uh, going up. Uh, and so the conclusion, so this person was sharing in this Slack channel that um, deriving from this data that if you're getting at max, if you're affecting at most 25% of the WordPress ecosystem by building tools for Gutenberg, then you are excluding the other 75% of the WordPress ecosystem that uses other things. And so we shouldn't spend so much time uh, with Gutenberg. It's a waste of time because 75% of the ecosystem uh, is using something else, um, which, okay. If you're looking at data, I guess you could say that, but also I think that's a, a flawed uh, assumption to come to or a, a conclusion to come to based on that data. Um, but uh, so there's a very interesting conversation where uh, Frank, uh, uh, wholeheartedly um, uh, countered against this basically by saying, A, it's the thing that's in core, um, so that's the thing that should be used, uh, but also B, large parts of it are being built by autom automaticians, um, and if they are building it, like WordPress.com is essentially like a demo site for next versions of WordPress. So like, obviously they have an audience and uh, that is using this thing. And so they are building it for themselves to benefit themselves financially or otherwise. So they've done all this research and they are invested. Uh, so it doesn't make sense to, uh, to do something that just cuts that out because this is, this is a thing that's basically already been sort of user tested, I guess. Uh, but the last thing was that, um, uh, when you are looking at uh, like the future and the types of sites uh, that would uh, make better use of Gutenberg, which are the things where you would do like bespoke Gutenberg blocks, like custom things for the, like those things are going to be the higher echelon, the more uh, expensive, the enterprise level things who can, who can hire the, the robust dev teams to build those tools for them and not the like mom and pop shop or the mid market sort of thing or like the small business or solopreneur sort of stuff they're going to be more likely to use something like a page builder because they're not they're going to be doing all the things or not going to be able to hire somebody who can build out this thing really complex thing um and that's the future so we should care about the future and not the present and and or the past and like what people are doing now or what would benefit like the mom and pop shop as much uh which is i mean it was, it was, yeah, it was very interesting. I did not get involved. I ate a lot of, I was like figuratively eating popcorn uh, as I was going through <laughs> this, this thread. Um, I agree with, with pretty much all of what Frank says. I do think that I have two sort of different audiences um, and that, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's interesting to, to think about like the, the disparity <clears throat> between um, like where WordPress is going um, and what it's historically been used for. Um, mm -hmm. Because historically it's been like democratized publishing, like give, give, a, give a blog to every person and, and give them the, the means to communicate online. Uh, but now it's like, oh, but also uh, you need to power this like Fortune 500 website um, as well. Um, and, and the like 50 different subsites underneath that like one domain umbrella. Mm -hmm. It's that's interesting to think about <clears throat> on the block perspective because I don't think that's how it was. Maybe I maybe maybe my filter didn't hear it that way years ago, but I don't think that's how Gutenberg was pitched. No, right? Well, so, I think that it wasn't how Gutenberg was pitched because if they had pitched it that way, they would immediately have lost people. <laughs> because I think that at least like the folks that like unless. Like, so the human maids and the ten ups and the alleys and the you know uh, crowd favorites is is the minority really uh, that is serving these really big companies, and I think the majority of the WordPress ecosystem is still individuals, right? So if if you are a product and you say, hey, we're gonna make this thing that's specifically for those folks over there, this one percent, um, like the WordPress one percent, 
um, then you're obviously the 99% is going to say, fuck you. I'm going to do something. I'm going to go to Medium. I'm going to go to Squarespace. I'm going to go to Wix, whatever. Like, you, you don't care about me anymore. So I think if had they pitched it that way, um, then they would have lost people immediately. They, they, they did lose people immediately because of, you know, how it was how it was built. But um, the, I think it would have The messaging more. around it was... Do yeah. you remember uh, in an agency we all used to work at, um, there was uh, a push... Like, oh, let's get the West Boss React course. We're all going to learn React because mm -hmm. that's going to transfer to the block thing. And of course, it there's, I mean, there's a little correlation, but not much. I mean, I think at this point, it's fair. To, is it a superset or a subset? I think it's a super. No, it's a subset. Or is it a superset? I don't know. But in any case, like, <clears throat> I, I, this is, it sounds like an oxymoron, but vanilla React is not a crazy thing. Mm -hmm. Like at this point, it is a, a matured, yeah. Item. Gutenberg has not matured is the problem. It hasn't had a chance to yet. There's still like these weird quirks and and breakage. And it's like, oh, well, yeah, with this new version, you're going to have to like rewrite all your existing blocks or modify all your existing blocks. Like, well, that sucks. Like that, I, like when you talk about the, the situations where people are rolling custom blocks, like the project I'm on, I think we have about 40. Um, and so when there's an update that impacts blocks, it's like, okay, well, I yeah, guess that's what time, we're working on this sprint time, and figuring out how to back and fix all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. I mean, in some of it, like you can look forward and <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, plan for, um, but some of it's just like, oh, didn't realize it was going to break quite like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Which is okay. I mean, I had a conversation with someone yesterday too about um, WordPress and everything else. And despite this conversation, there's still no great solution to say like, I'm creating content, what do I use? I mean, right. it's, it's of course WordPress. You know, there's there's wonderful frameworks out there and none of them have solved the content problem, you know? And I, some of that comes back to the WordPress decisions, not options. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm as a PHP developer, I look, to, look at WordPress now and I'm like, I mean, it's, we're still in 5.6 days in conceptually in WordPress, you know? and the PHP cadence is not going to slow down. It's going to get get weird for a little while. So, oh well, neither one are going anywhere. <laughs> uh, a lot of my a lot of my clients um, think WordPress is too complicated. Um, it's kind of the the fear when they go into it, um, and that's why they they start to gravitate towards like Wix and Squarespace and, but also depending on budget and also, I mean, it depends on need because some of the people that are referred to me, I'm like, yeah, you do just need a, a Wix. Like you do just need, like you don't yeah. need anything that WordPress is offering <laughs> basically. If, if it's just like, you really need a, a splash page with hours and a phone number. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. It's hard to get around the like, this is too complicated. And then also if they have signed on before in the lot, like, and then now they sign on and are like, oh, now it looks completely different. That's like very unnerving to people. Yeah. Um, There's gotta be something with the, um, um, we do a lot of uh, uh, like modifying admin um, nav stuff. So, I mean, when you're logged in, like it's focused on what you need to get to is like, content stuff's up top and then if yeah. there's any settings related stuff that you actually have access to it's available but it's like sub menued and you know um th that's a concerted decision and ongoing effort to really surface the interactions user need in admin um and it's really had me rethink like the standard wp admin experience like yeah if you just log in when you install that as admin you're like oh crap you know yeah um I yeah, I was going to ask you about it. that. I remember um, back in the days when I was uh, involved with the docs team, um, there were discussions at the time of and conversation, yeah, about like um, changing the admin experience generally, um, or like having tailored uh, admin experiences or something where like, the, depending yeah. on the type of user you are, you have access to this sort of thing or that sort of thing. And all the stuff is still there, or maybe it's not, but like, it's more directed to, to things. And because of the sort of sweeping changes that that would, uh, apply, it was one of those things where like, yeah, that's an idea. 
but we're not gonna you know because it's 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 a dramatic change um to do that sort of thing um we don't make dramatic changes except for the editor experience well yeah i mean that's obviously but but even that even the, in in the editor experience and then now the site the site editor experience like yeah. um it's like one little piece and like i imagine at some point it's gonna be the whole thing but like you know we're gonna change this section and that was a big deal and then we're gonna change this section that's a big deal and um yeah uh i i because uh we don't uh specifically have topics uh that that come in i had the thought of uh uh randomly clicking on links in wikihow uh and so i have prepared uh a, a wikihow article or have found a wikihow article that i uh thought we could uh i could share and we could talk about which is um how to find out someone's name that you have forgotten i think this is a very useful uh skill and, and place some of our uh side interests of uh you know being being detectives um uh, forgetting someone's name can be awkward, uh, but it doesn't have to result in embarrassment. Uh, it's a very common situation to find oneself in, yada, yada, yada. Uh, a psychological study suggests that a person's name is the least memorable aspect of what we're likely to recall of a new acquaintance. I'd love to see that. Uh, <laughs> That's yeah. kind of sad. <laughs> <laughs> More forgettable than their job, their hometown, or their hobbies. It doesn't have a citation, so... Uh, maybe that's that's worth looking at. Uh, the best thing you can do to when you realize you've forgotten someone's name is to realize there are things you can do to repair the situation. Let's let's see how uh, good any of these suggestions actually are. Um, so method one is getting someone to reveal their name. Uh, ask them for their contact information. Depending on the situation, it might be appropriate to ask someone to exchange business cards with you. Their business card will contain their name in addition to other contact information. Even asking for their email address often results in learning their name. Uh, many people have their names as part of their email address. Uh, or you it, discover the email address they've created when they were like 16. And right. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, ooh. Exactly. Yeah. You're like, I'm learning new things about you. Uh, you can ask everything. Other you can ask name. them to enter their phone number in your phone. They'll likely either enter both first and last names along with their number. Um, I I would say that probably like the the thing that happens most of the time when people exchange contact information now on phones is like I will text you and then yes. right like yes. so it's going to be like so the the reality is like like it's going to be exchanged. It's not going to be like I'm going to hand you my phone and they're going to put it in. It's going to be like oh I'll just text it to you and then you're going to have to put in your phone person that looks like uh you know shrek uh that i met at the coffee shop <laughs> no but see that's where that's where then i go and how clarify for me how do you spell your name yeah there you go there you go <laughs> I, think I think we're a getting to that a r k you're like damn it i've um i've definitely i might have told this story before but i <clears throat> definitely have done this a few times where I try to come up with like some sort of device to help me remember yes. the name and then it fails me <laughs> yeah, I've right. like I've gotten the device down and I'm like right on point but the second time around my brain goes to a completely different direction yeah. I am uh, I, um, go ahead go ahead Gary. I I like the approach of just guessing and like constantly calling them by the wrong name <laughs> um, and I have done I, that in I, I, like I, in a business in a setting, I was like at a trade show and oh I met God. someone and immediately forgot their name. And then we were supposed to be going to dinner with this person. Oh no. And so we're all walking and I had to ask a question about something. And I'm like, there were like three people ahead of me and I'm like, uh, Kim, Kim. And the person next to me is like, who are you? Who are you attention trying to get? I'm like, I don't know. I forgot her name. What is her name? And they're like, it's Lisa. Okay, well, that worked in well, that that's, case. That's asking someone else, though. So I didn't like, ask someone else. I just thought I'd try, and well, I figured yeah, they would turn around but and somebody else. Me. But somebody else. <laughs> but if yes. you had nailed it, how shocked would you have been? You would have just been like, oh, I forgot my question. I would also be suspicious if they were just, like, being polite, you know? Like, um, not, yeah, that's that's true. Uh, uh, number two is interesting. I will do that face-to-face, -face, though, too. Mm -hmm. Introduce like, the person to another person. I feel like this is ripe uh, for problems. Uh, no, that always that always has backfired with yeah, me. I've, I've right? tried it, and it's never gone smoothly. Uh, it says I like if to make you're a in joke a social, 
If you're in a social environment with other friends, there'll likely be other people you know. Take this opportunity to introduce someone whose name you do know to your new friend. When you introduce your friend to yeah. the person whose name you've forgotten, there's a good chance that the person will introduce themselves to the new person. Um, or they will look to you to introduce them. <laughs> yes. Here's where this works. Have fun with it. This is my friend Alfonso from Rancho Cucamonga or Walla Walla, Washington, one of those fun, stupid cities, and you make the whole thing a joke. And then you step back and let everyone else sort it out. <laughs> Figure it out. <laughs> step in and like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pay attention, though, because they're about to say their name, and now you've got it. Honestly, I mean, my number one strategy is just like – transparent honesty of being like that's you know that, you know what i've i've forgotten your this is embarrassing i've forgotten your name can you remind me like that's mm. that's literally the last thing in this article so do actually, all of this other stuff one. first before actually just owning up and asking yeah i feel um, like sometimes owning up is almost endearing depending on the situation i, I think um, so too Obviously, if you're like six years in and you're like, I should really know this person's name. I but mean, that's why it's important to admit it this, as soon as yes. you realize that you don't know their name. But I mean, Allison, we're already well into our, our, our friendship for me to realize today that your name is not actually Allison. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, Can you uh, imagine if I was just like, actually, just to let you guys know, Allison is my Jane. middle name. <laughs> <laughs> um. That would introduce be so cool, your, by the way. Introduce to drop yourself that at this again. Point, yeah, like, really. <laughs> like, I would, I would actually like have like mad respect for like. Dang, talk about the long con. Like that was well played. Not only My... that, but like created social media around this persona <laughs> because it was easier than correcting. I'm like, I have you guys. These are all my fake accounts because I just couldn't couldn't be bothered. Um... Here's my other GitHub account. <laughs> my um plus, my... my name is actually plus in the Alice. Yeah, account. it's oddly. <laughs> Um, my dad has this tendency to nickname people, uh -oh. um, nick not like shorten their name when they have not asked for it to be shortened. Um, and so there's where I grew up, there was someone a few doors down and my whole life, I knew her as Patty. Uh -oh. My whole family called her Patty had, and then only, only about five years ago, I discovered that her name is Trisha, not even Patricia, but Trisha. And somehow my dad made the leap and my whole family has been calling her Patty for my entire life. And I was like, she must hate our family. Yeah, yeah, she really must. <laughs> I had um, I had a neighbor as a kid that I called neighbor because <laughs> that, that actually, played right along with it. I think that makes an appearance here uh, as well um okay so hey, you've, got, yeah. you've got introduce yourself again which seems weird uh if you've already been introduced and you're saying oh i'm sorry i'm chris <laughs> like randomly in the middle uh, of something uh there is uh, ask the person for additional information about their name like how do you spell your last name or how do, how do you spell your name i think is, is it says asking them how their name is spelled uh particularly if you recall that it might be an unusual name um <laughs> Uh, which which backfires again if it's something like Smith T or, or Joe. The, the, I which M. What's really good is uh, is that the picture that goes along with this is the person with a, a notepad and they're writing down J O N E S. <laughs> um, but that's like I asked one of my friends was dating someone and it was like way far after I could clarify his name essentially and I was like oh it's one of the Beatles names great. I'm on this. And then I was like, do you spell your name with an N or an HN? Like so confident. And he's right. like, my name is Paul. And I was just like, damn it. Wrong beetle. Oh <laughs> Whatever you say, Ringo. <laughs> uh, there is, so method two is employing detective skills to discover their name. Oh, uh, you can ask right. another, a wallet. <laughs> you can ask another person for help, uh, which, which we've talked about. Uh, you can eavesdrop on their conversations with others. Like they that. may yeah. introduce themselves to other people over the course of the time together. Um, there is searching online uh, with uh, a graphic that, that has like a little Facebook search bar, which is actually honestly a thing that I do. Like I like look for people like on LinkedIn or whatever. Uh, or, or other social media. LinkedIn is a good place because it's like you are assumed to be a professional environment. So it, it's probably the name that you, are, you go by. Uh, mm -hmm. That doesn't help for my aunt whose LinkedIn profile is, 
I want to say like Raven Darkstar, but it's not that. It's some That's other amazing. it's some <laughs> other thing like that. Uh and it's not, you know, her given name that I know her by. Um uh, then we have wait for the person to reveal their name and has a picture of a, of a man saying my friend so it's just that's the the neighbor uh thing and just keep calling them something else uh until you figure out uh i think that's where we mostly uh <laughs> what mostly happens and then finally yes the very last thing uh in in the wiki how article is confess your situation to the person i uh, back to everything that else thing. has failed I had a boss whose name on LinkedIn was like first name and then last name was do not try to hire me. And uh, I thought that was like, that's the first thing I thought when you said LinkedIn, like, I feel like you could probably get into some weird stuff there. <laughs> Maybe it's just the, the kind of people I hang with. You know? <laughs> it's your bubble. <laughs> yeah, fair. Now, I, now I'm, I'm curious about the, my aunt. It's also what I, I often just I my default is is that someone doesn't know my name um and that's maybe a sad psychological place to live in <laughs> <laughs> but so I'm always reintroducing myself especially if I'm meeting someone out of my normal context so like now that I live in a smaller town like for instance our, one of our neighbors works at the hardware store in the paint department and we were down there and I was like he's not gonna know us out of context like yeah like, that's fun he's, he's in that work context thing he's yeah. in work mode so like mm -hmm. we're just people who are coming in to buy paint it's not gonna click that oh we're all like we're Allison and Robin we're your next door name yeah right. so I don't know and so and I was right he I, I was like he didn't really he knew we were someone but he didn't he wasn't putting it together and I was it like, was probably like a week later he someone. said to his like partner like the other day you know those <laughs> people <laughs> that like uh the neighbors the you know the new ones right you know the ones we're talking about yeah they were in the store that's that's how that went down <laughs> what are their names and i know i've been going to the bakery too much because they know my name <laughs> uh well it's not a bad thing yeah, no, it's nice. Name. It's a very small town. There, and I always order the same thing, so I think that's really memorable. <laughs> yeah. How is uh how is Lady Smith? It's good. Yeah. It's uh quaint. I went to a mini like a uh, art speakers conference in town the other day, and I was the youngest person there. <laughs> um <laughs> Which was kind oh, of expected, but I'm also like, okay, where my where my thirty and forty somethings at? Like, yeah, working. I know they're I mean, out there. I've seen. You know I've what I mean? Like, them. was it weekend or weekday? It was a weekend. Oh yeah, where the heck were they? So, the but things. the the problem is, is that the arts organization here, while amazing, they offer ton a ton of classes. Most of the classes are during the day. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm like, well, it's not that. I mean, I still might end up taking one because art, but like. I'd like to also like meet some people and I'm like, like, unless you're a freelancer, you're not going to like a yeah. class at 11 AM on a Tuesday. Like, <laughs> and I'm like, how do, how do grownups meet people? Maybe that can be our topic next week. <laughs> I, 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 recently, I recently, somebody uh, was talking about Victoria and uh, that it was, they spent, I don't know, uh, an extended period it wasn't just like a vacation for a week it, it seemed like it took like maybe a month or two or something uh and they had basically really awful things to say about victoria so it made me wonder um yeah uh hmm. what what your uh island life has been like for the you know the the last year or so that's interesting Are... i really i really like victoria but i mean i guess we've only visited so that's a, a bit different it's ex I mean, it, things are more expensive in Victoria because it's yeah. a slightly larger city. Yeah, um, I mean, I think part of it was the the uh, income disparity uh, or disparities, uh, plural, um, and uh, yeah, the maybe stuck up itness or something. I don't know. Yeah, I think I think something that I know I've heard from a few people who have visited is that since we're west coastish mm -hmm. it's there's more visible disparity and more visible unhoused people yeah and like 
um, mostly because they can survive here without a warming shelter a lot of the time. And right. so I think that visibility can be kind of stark for some people. Um, and I mean, Victoria, like Vancouver Island as a whole, there's like no doctors and housing is in, really hard to come by if you're a renter, especially mm -hmm. renting is like near impossible and rents are really high. And like, there's, there's all sorts of things that I can see could combat. I mean, but since we came from Toronto, it was kind of like, but yeah. I was like, oh, but if you're coming from say like, I don't know, Calgary or some, yeah. I don't know, some other place, then I think everything would be a bit, bit more alarming, but I don't know. I love it. It's green and kind of just lush and lovely. And I love being near the ocean and um, yeah. I don't know. And I, this is a small town that like has a bunch of stuff that you mm -hmm. wouldn't necessarily expect a small town to have. Like, I'm like, we have a vegan restaurant and a plant yeah. store and a gluten-free restaurant. And you know what I mean? So I'm just like, it, it's almost like the math doesn't add up, but I'm like, but here we are. So right. it's just like a movie. <laughs> yeah. And then, well, they filmed, they filmed um, a Hallmark movie here. <laughs> Because the main street is like picturesque, right? So, um, our cute little main street is uh, under construction right now. They're getting rid of all. Well, it's a good thing. They're getting rid of all the parallel parking and like expanding sidewalks. So it's going to be significantly more walkable. I mean, it was pretty walkable already, but even better. But that's so. that's uh, that's a really nice change. <clears throat> yeah, I, I took the kids there last weekend, or maybe the weekend before, and we did like the older kids. We did a restaurant. We went to the game store. We went to the bookstore. We went to the arcade. And then we went and saw a show at the Historical Arts Center, and it was like an opera of the tortoise and the hare. Like, it was a wow. packed day. I'm exhausted even talking about it. I know. Sure. How, how do you even manage to, like, honestly, I'm like, I'm buying meat today, and I'm exhausted <laughs> already, and I haven't even left the house. Like, yeah. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Special thanks to Serpiente Negra Ensemble for the use of their tracks for our intro and outro music. You can find them online at serpientenegra.bandcamp.com. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.